Hi, I'm Julie Johnson with Firebox Training. Today I'm going to show you how to create a RESTful web service using Eclipse and the implementation called Jersey, which is the reference implementation for Java REST web services. So let's go ahead and uh, go ahead and create a new dynamic web project. Okay, so if you don't find it in here, just go to Other until you find Dynamic Web Project under Web. And we're going to call this first, we'll call this first REST web service. We're using Apache Tomcat. I'm actually going to use a dynamic web module version 2.5. I could also use 3.0. Um, as far as configuration goes, I'm going to leave this alone. I'll hit next. And uh, let's go ahead and generate the web.xml deployment descriptor. And so what we end up with is pretty much just a blank project. And under web content, you're going to find the webinf, and here's this web.xml file. Uh, before we do anything with that, we want to make sure that we have the necessary Jersey libraries. So I went to the Jersey website and I downloaded the Jersey files and then expanded it and you end up with this Jersey archive that looks like this and under the live directory there's all these jar files so I'm just going to copy all these jar files and uh, just drag them right under the live directory and copy them so now I have all the necessary Java files available to get the job done the next step we want to do is look at our web.xml we can look at this in tree mode or in source mode. I'm not going to mess around with the welcome file list, so I'll just get rid of that. Okay, so I'm going to go to tree mode and we want to register our jersey as being the servlet container for this. Uh, we have to have that entry in there so it knows to, that, uh, that it's going to be using jersey. So under servlets, we're going to say add. We can call the servlet name anything we want. For example, I can say rest servlet. Call the display name anything you want. This is really just for our IDE. But as far as the servlet class goes, if I click on browse and I type in servlet container, you'll see here that it's wanting to use com.sun jersey spi container servlet. How did it find that? Well, the necessary libraries were in that live directory. Okay, so initialization parameters. What we want to do is in here we have a parameter and this is particular to Jersey. Um, this parameter is called comsun jersey config property packages. What I can do is place in here the package names where we want to have our resources. Okay, so I'm going to call this com.firebox.training.resources. And so if I want to make something a resource, I'm going to make sure that it belongs to that package. Okay, so let's take a look here at our servlet. Here's our REST servlet. Here are the initialization parameters. Uh, let's take a look at the servlet mappings. Okay, so we want to have a mapping and we want to map a URL pattern to the servlet. The name of the servlet is REST servlet. So I'm going to say add and you'll see that it magically appears in the drop down. And so in here, this is where I can say, okay, well, maybe I want to call this REST. So the URL pattern looks like this. I hit finish and go like that. Now let's right click on our project and go to properties. If you click on web project settings, this is where you can find the context root. Okay, so when we're trying to access a resource, this is what the URL is going to look like. We're going to have the host name and the port number followed by the context root. followed by, let's, let me hit cancel here, in this web.xml we specified rest as being our pattern. 
and then any path after that, which I'll show you in just a moment. Okay, and so now let's go ahead and create a Java class. So we'll collapse this right here. Here we have our Java resources. I'm going to right click and say new class. And let's make sure this belongs to com.fireboxtraining.resources. And we can call this, we can call it anything we want. I'll call this hello. It's just a plain old Java object. Okay, so we hit finish. And now this is where we can put some annotations. Okay, so to make this uh, accessible, we're going to put an at sign right here and then control space and you'll see that we have this path. So this path annotation belongs to Java XWSRS package. And in here, we're just going to go like this. I'm going to put some code inside of here. I went ahead and here we have some more annotations. So before I explain the annotations, let me make sure I import all of the necessary stuff. Okay, so here we have three methods. One says say plain text hello, the other is say XML hello, and the other is say HTML hello. And so if our call is a call using requesting uh, plain text, then it will use this one. Notice that the get method is used for all of these. For right now, we're just going to stick with get. There's other options such as post, put, delete. Okay, so um, this path here is pretty important. This path would be tacked on to the end of the URL. So if you take a look here, once this is published, this is how we would call it. Oh, let me get rid of that. There we go. I'm going to go ahead and copy this. Save everything we have. And now I'm just going to right click on my web service and run as, and we're going to run on the server. We have our Tomcat server. Actually, you know what? We don't even have a server yet. I'm going to create that. There we have it. And now we're going to right click and run on server. Now it will come up with an error right here because we don't have the right path. Remember we need the path to look like this. Okay, now that we got that working, you're probably wondering how do we get these different methods to get called? Well, there's a nice little command line tool called curl, that's C-U-R-L, it's free, and um, it's automatically installed in Linux and Unix. Uh, for Windows, you have to actually download it. Uh, you can just go out to Google and type in uh, curl download. Uh, once you have it, here's our command line. Okay, so let's take a look at our command line. I'm just going to, uh, let's take a look here. So we have the curl executable. Dash I means show the response headers. Dash H with this argument right here means let's accept text slash HTML. So this would map up with this method right up here. So basically we're specifying that the request is text slash HTML. The method we're using is the get method, which is the default. And then we have the URL. Okay, so when we Go ahead and hit enter here. You see that here's our response. So you'll see that we got our response right here. Okay, so if we want to change this up a bit, maybe instead of text slash HTML, we say text slash XML. Look at the difference in our response here. Here's our response. Let's do one more with text slash plain. And there's our hello world. So we have different ways of calling this.
So that's the easiest way to test this. I hope you got a lot out of this video tutorial. Please visit our website at www.fireboxtraining.com.